This week, we're continuing to take the community's excellent questions from across social media. We covered topics like how uniques can be used in old games, whether the PC gaming ecosystem is really worth targeting, how our DEX partner is leveraging Ultra's tech, and much more. Let's get to it. Uh, MD 100% UOS asks, as gaming is mainly phone based at present and VR will be in the future, anyone who's played VR will know the PC console is dead, not only for gameplay, but cost. Oculus is 400 bucks. PlayStation is a thousand bucks. PC is 1500 bucks plus. What is Ultra's plans for mobile gaming and VR? I take a lot of issue with uh, this particular question, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a PC gaming is very far from being dead. Um, and I think actually the blockchain space will um, kind of like definitely give it, you know, obtain some level of lead because you you need to be able to develop fast, try things and so on. And that's what, what PC is for. PC has always led, led you know, technology um, for the rest of the platforms and eventually get, you know, um, adopted in the other platforms. Now, um, I think the, the, the PC market still is a much smaller market than the, the mobile space, but the mobile space is extremely competitive while the PC isn't. So when you think about, you know, in terms of, um, you know, decision, what is the easiest market to take away right now? I would definitely say PC, you know, very easy. Um, this said, um, mobile is the next uh, frontier. Um, and, you know, I've said it, you know, four years ago, the thing with mobile right now is that um, marketplaces are forbidden on um, iOS. Um, but I also said, you know, four years ago um, that I believe that um, the European um, government is going to force Apple to open third party marketplaces. Um, and we've seen past year that it is something that's happening. It's very, very likely going to happen. Um, and, and this is the moment when, you know, you want to have you know, a mobile application for doing what Ultra does, because at that point we can, we don't segment half of, you know, we, okay, we can do it on Android, but everybody on iOS can't use it. That's kind of like, it, it doesn't make sense. Like you, a lot of friends are not going to be able to connect and so on. So, so for us, the, the logical step is complete the PC uh, platform. And then um, next step is making a mobile version out of it initially, you know, only for Android, but by the time, you know, everything will be polished and so on, my guess is uh, iOS will be forced to be open and then boom, you know, we, we will be kind of like at the forefront of what's done on, on mobile. I, I just want to add that I, I've been hearing people predicting the demise of PC gaming since the late nineties. So I, I don't, I don't think we're, we're going anywhere. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It, the PC platform offers something that is difficult to achieve on console and it's like customization, um, you know, communication is so much better on PC, chat, you know, you get the keyboard, you get camera, this and that. So they, you know, cons console offers something, but it has limitations. Um, and PC offers something else and it also has certain limitation. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's there, I don't think, it, I don't see it going away any anytime soon. Our next question is also from Ultrabader on Twitter. Does the future DeFi partner have Ultra technology in its protocol and not only integration with the platform, for example, free transaction fees? Well, the DeFi partner uses our protocol. So um, their protocol is inside our protocol. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, maybe result, maybe we, should, we should clarify what protocol actually means. Yeah, I mean, the, the definition of a protocol is it, it, kind of like it's an agreement on how you communicate between two entities. Um, but so in the blockchain space, we call the protocol, we call the base, base layer. Um, but you can also call a, a, 
like a smart contract on the blockchain, you can also say, call it a protocol technically. Uh, that's why I said it's, you know, they have their protocol in our protocol because, you know, technically they're both protocols. They're like um, agreements on how things work. And, but so, so they, they heavily rely on what we've built and um, this is what will give them an edge um, on what's out there. I think a lot of people are going to like it. The next question is actually one that uh, both you and I answered on Twitter. I thought that it would be valuable for us to reiterate it here within the podcast. It's from nicholas.uos and he asks, can you explain why there is no max supply for our tokens? Essentially, the way the way the blockchain kind of like finances its infrastructure, um, you, you don't want one single entity to have to pay for it. Because if if we go bankrupt, for example, um, who's going to pay for it? Right. So you, you want it to be decentralized and you want a system where n like no single or few entity are paying for running it. And the way you do that is that you create inflation. So for, for running the blockchain, the blockchain is rewarding the people that are running the block. But so for us, um, the simplest and just like, you know, in terms of many other blockchains, there's no limit um, because we, we want everything we build to be sustainable. And by sustainable is we know it's going to work forever. Um, well, here with Bitcoin, there is a question. Is it going to happen? Do we need to make an update or something? Like we don't have that question. We know it's going to work. And um, the, the way you can think about inflation is basically it's a small tax on whoever owns Bitcoin uh, coins on the network. So whoever owns the most coins is basically taxed the most for this inflation. Um, but when you look at um, kind of like the operation cost of Ultra's blockchain and the monthly inflation, it's absolutely, um, you know, um, it, like it's it's um, insignificant it like um it's not going to change anything for anybody um even for big token holders it's insignificant the next question is from ultra shishi on twitter uh do you have in mind or in plans to implement nested nfts is there a, like a house as an nft and a house has furniture inside which would also be nfts like nfts within nfts basically um yes um there is there are discussions for this um it is complex um and the reason why is because our nfts have a lot of features that other nfts don't have if you if you look at today's nfts it's very simple uh, nft um and then you know, you can transfer, you can do everything. On Ultra, Ultra's NFTs will permit many more business use cases with conditions, like maybe you can trade it if, you know, you're part of a group or this or that. Um, if you, you know, if the time frame is correct and so on. And so if you take an NFT with certain conditions and you put it in an NFT without condition, and then suddenly you can move an NFT that you weren't supposed to move, that's problematic. It kind of defies the purpose of all of this functionality. So typically, um, you know, nesting isn't really necessary when, you know, you make a smart contract or when you have an app, you can kind of like simulate nesting for, on the user's experience, but not necessarily have them linked. And if you need to have them linked, you can make a smart contract in which you put everything and then the smart contract is a house, for example. Um, so there, you know, you, you need to think about it kind of like differently. Another way is to give all of the tokens to a smart contract and then receive another token, which can be tr transferred. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, um, it's a, it's a complex topic and probably nesting in itself is not going to be something we will do because 
you know, we want to benefit from all the other functionality. I actually think that when you talk about it in the context of linked NFTs instead of nested NFTs, it's way more interesting because what you're actually talking about is like a, a mesh of functionality and not a hierarchy. And yeah, I mean, there, there may be ways we can nest where, you know, we would take the highest common denominator, the one with the most limitation. You, you, you look all the NFTs, maybe they can all be traded except one that has a limitation to be traded in a certain country, for example. Well, then if they're together, well, now this nested NFT can not be traded in that certain country. Um, that's an, another way, but it's a lot of work for, to be honest, like, uh, like I don't see really the business case that would really require us to nest them when you can do it in, you know, a more simpler way with a smart contract or with, right. you know, classic development. The next question that we have is from Vitam on Twitter. Uh, in the ultra marketplace, are there any sorting, filtering, or more advanced search tools on the way? Yeah, so um, we implemented um, a very cool, um, a super powerful search sort of engine. You can uh, think about it like this. Um, so while what you see right now is like super bare bone, you type the name, we search it. It's actually, extremely powerful like this is kind of like the cutting edge of research and real-time updates and so on um the only thing is we haven't implemented it, it like more ui to control it um and this is something that's being done like literally right now um so filters will show up over time um and uh, already in the next update you will you will start seeing filters you will be able to organize by price and organize by different things this is, it's actually done already. Um, so we, at Ultra, we, we have like a development environment, QA environment, staging environment, and then a production environment. So when the developers are done, it goes to quality assurance that, you know, checks it. If everything is done, it goes in kind of like an anti-chamber where we say, okay, now we see the thing. I was sure everything's all right. And if everything's got all right, it goes into production. And so um, these first filters, they're already there. Um, I think they're in QA right now, um, so, or maybe potentially even staging. I think QA. Um, so you will see them in um, one of the next updates. And, and it will evolve over time. Another important question that I think that we should answer is from Bit Hotel Holdler on Twitter. Many companies are laying off employees in these bearish times. Is this the case for Ultra? No, we're not laying off anybody. We don't want anybody to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're actually still hiring. In, in fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. Um, from Math U on Twitter, will it be possible on the secondhand marketplace to sell an account with high level characters? Uh, and what are the real differences between a used game and a new game? So there's a bunch of questions here. Let's start with uh, reselling high level characters. So um, characters can be tokenized and they will be represented on the NFT marketplace like any other NFT. Um, we will have, like I mentioned just in the previous question, filters so that you can filter per game, per type, per you know, creator and so on. Um, but they will be part of the marketplace. So including games, characters and whatnot. Right. And then the next question is, um, what are the real differences between a used game and a new game on the marketplace? So the difference is when you buy a new game, there is sort of a warranty where if it doesn't work on your computer, you can ask for a refund, for example. Um, aside from that, it's exactly the same. Um, now, it is possible that certain games will link the character progression to the game's NFT, which means at that point when you sell your game NFT, you would be selling your character as part of it. Um, that's one use case. Um, another thing is like in the future, we are probably going to have kind of like um, like because like because eventually every NFT on Ultra will be usable as a as a profile picture. 
um, and that include game NFTs. And so it is possible that um, it's something that I would love to see that that while you buy the game, there would be also like in the game's NFT, it would be a PFP as well. So if you buy this um, game, um, you buying a character that you can use as a as your profile picture across Ultra, um, and then because it's a PFP, they would be all unique, and so there might be some interesting things that will will be derived from that. And then you know buying a new one would give you maybe a chance to have a more rare one. Um, well, what's on the marketplace is exactly what you're gonna buy, so there, there would be that as a difference. So our last question is from Andrews on Twitter. And I think, honestly, this is the most important question. David, what's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> um, I would say Mewtwo uh, because I like the name. I think it's hilarious. And I like cats. I'm a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Really appreciated your time today. We blasted through a ton of questions and I'm sure that the community is going to really appreciate it. All right. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye guys. Bye.